What's up, Dolphins fans? It's Mitchell Rents from Chat Sports. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to break down the latest coaching rumors after the Miami Dolphins went out and hired brand new head coach Mike McDaniel. Now, if you've watched the show for a while, you'll know that McDaniel was the, the top candidate and the dude that ultimately I thought was going to end up getting the position. People close to McDaniel said this is a dream come true for him. And for the young guy at the age of only 38 years old, I mean, this is an absolute steal. So the team is yet to announce the deal and the coordinators haven't been announced yet either. But what we're going to be talking about here on today's show is what's going to happen at the OC and DC positions. Now, when you saw the notification go on your phone that the Miami Dolphins have gone out and hired Mike McDaniel, I want you to be honest with me. And what was your one word reaction? So scroll on down. Let me know that one word reaction. If you didn't see the video that we put out here on the show, it's probably because you're not subscribed. It's probably also because you don't have those notifications on. Help us get to 21,000 subs, and we will do our best to help you guys stay up to date. Everything going on down in Miami Garden. So sub, hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a thing. If the Dolphins do decide to move on from their coordinators, guess what? You're going to see a video about it. And the latest rumors circulating right now are, is George Gotze going to be done in Miami? So he was promoted as your co-OC and tight ends coach back in 2021. Usually when you hire a brand new head coach in McDaniel, it means you're also going to go out and get a brand new staff as well. The reason why he was promoted as co-OC from Brian Flores was because of Godsey's relationship with Tua Tonga of in 2020. So back in 2020, anytime Tua got into an issue, he would go over to the sideline, get out the tablet, and him and Godsey would digest and break a lot of things down. Now, I also said on this show, if you hire two OCs, it's kind of like when you have two quarterbacks. You don't have any. And one of the big issues I saw on the offensive side of the football this season for the Dolphins was it was kind of like never in sync. And when you have Godsey and then you have Studsville, I personally think that you could see both of these guys out the door. He's been with the Dolphins for the past four years, and he hasn't done a very good job with the running back. So Studsville was your co-OC and RB coach, and I think a lot of people watching right now would be like, wait a minute, the running backs haven't played well. Now, sure, the offensive line deserves some blame. Tua Tonga-Vailoa deserves some blame. Miles Gaskin for a seventh-round pick, I thought, stepped up halfway decent. But when you go back and look at a lot of the trades, when you go back and look at a lot of the free agency moves that this team did, even players that they went out and drafted, it has not quite worked out, which Mike McDaniel, who is a running back-minded offensive coordinator, I think this one's definitely going to be out the door. So in terms of how can the Dolphins improve, you know the defense is solid, and don't worry, we'll talk about Josh here in a second. But here's the Miami Dolphins offense in terms of points for. You can look at yards, you can look at certain other metrics, but at the end of the day, I look at points. Points. Why? Because that's how you win games, right? In 2021, they were ranked 22nd of 32. 2020, that's top half of the league, 15th of 32. 2019, 25th. 2018, 26th in the league. 2017, 28th. As you can see, the Miami Dolphins offense has not been very successful. And if you're McDaniel bringing in a young offensive-minded coach, you want to be top 10. The last time that the Dolphins were a top 10 scoring offense was 2001. I was eight years old all the way back then. I don't know what y'all were doing in 2001, but I feel like I was listening to Now One. You remember those old CD discs? Yeah, that's how long ago this was. So here's my question. Do you keep or do you fire Gotsy and Studsville? Usually when you bring in a new head coach, you end up moving on from them. But go ahead. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. So K for keep, F for fire. So while you're getting hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and let me know. This one is very simple to me. You fire them. And it's not because I don't respect what Gotsy did. It's not because I know the players don't like Studsville as well. But if you're going to go in and you're going to bring in a brand new head coach, an offensive-minded head coach, and when you see all the success that all these Sean McVay young guys have had, you bring him in and let him build his own staff. You let him build his own staff from the top to the bottom because if I'm also Steven Ross, an owner who has been alleged right now of trying to pay off head coaches to lose games, I would say I need to build my reputation back up and let this young guy come in and do his thing. Now, in terms of who are some other OC candidates, the Miami Dolphins have yet to announce any legitimate candidates. So what I try to do here is do my best job of being Sherlock Holmes and try to 
give you five solid names that I think the Dolphins go out to get. Also, it's five very well-respected names. Thomas Brown, running backs coach of the Rams. I actually wouldn't be surprised if he was promoted to the Rams OC. Pep Hamilton has done a phenomenal job with quarterbacks. Could he do the same with Tua Tagovailoa? Definitely two names to keep in mind. Bobby Slowick, passing game coordinator. Uh, excuse me, passing game specialist for the 49ers last year. And then Bobby Turner, he's got like 28 years of experience. Also the running backs coach for the 49ers. And I'm also going to throw out a name, Pat Shermer, former Broncos OC, because of some connections and rumors on who McDaniel might want as his DC. So here's the question. It's your turn to be the GM. And as far as I'm concerned, probably all y'all could do a little bit better than what Chris Greer has done. So who do you want as the Dolphins OC? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Super Bowl 56 is this week, and I can't freaking wait. If I'm being 100% honest with y'all, if you spent time watching the Pro Bowl, I feel bad for you because the Pro Bowl is an absolute joke. We might as well just slap some flags in those guys because they're just wasting everyone's time. But if you want to go ahead and bet on Super Bowl 56, coin toss, Gatorade, it doesn't matter. Go to chatsports.com slash bet promo code. Dolphins 125 to get that 125% deposit bonus. If you're wondering, Mitch, what are the latest odds on this game? Rams are four-point favorites. The Bengals, the over-under is set at 48.5. I am betting on Joe Burrow. I am betting on the Bengals to outright win this game. And if you guys want to go ahead and put your money where your mouth is, remember, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Dolphins125 is the only way you're going to get that 125% deposit bonus. So we talked about the offensive coordinators. It's time now to talk about the defensive coordinators. And is Josh Boyer going to be on his way out in Miami? He's got 16 years of coaching experience, the past three with the Dolphins. Now, Stephen Ross has mentioned before, and this is before all the Brian Flores allegations came out, that he has hinted at keeping Boyer and he hinted at keeping the entire Dolphins defensive staff because the Dolphins defensive staff has definitely been pretty damn good and they've been the the strong suit of this team over the past few years now what I'm about to show you is the Dolphins last five years and you have to remember Boyer came in in 2019 so the two years before Boyer came in 29th in the league 27th in the league now you're gonna be like wait a minute Mitch 32nd, that's dead last. Yes, the Miami Dolphins were very bad in Boyer's first year, but they were also trying to figure out their identity, and Boyer was trying to make a switch playing guys that maybe weren't as good as some other players, but guys that he knew were going to be a part of the system in the next two seasons. Then in 2020, 6th in the league. 2021, 16th. Realistically, they probably could have been even better if the offense could have sustained some drives those first eight weeks, but Boyer has done a phenomenal job with this Miami Dolphins defense. So, with the old saying, you bring in a new head coach, you're going to change up your coordinators. Should the Dolphins keep Josh Boyer? I want you to type that Y for yes, or scroll on down and type your N for no. My answers when I answer stuff like this are pretty simple. If you can upgrade, you try to do it. Mike McDaniel is going to do his homework. He is a very analytical type of dude, and he is going to digest this. So, personally, though, if you can keep Boyer, I like him a lot. He's done a lot of good things for this team unless you can upgrade. So here are some Dolphins DC candidates if they do decide to try to move on. You have Vic Fangio, who we're about to talk about here in a sec. James Betcher is definitely a very sneaky name to keep in mind, senior defensive assistant for the 49ers. Gerard Mayo, linebackers coach of the Patriots, very well respected. Chris Richard keeps getting brought up. He's with the Saints. I don't think this would be an upgrade. Eric Washington, a defensive line coach with Buffalo, not really an upgrade. Realistically, man, there's probably only three names on this list that I could even consider a potential upgrade. So who do you want as the Dolphins' next DC? If you want to keep Boyer, spam Boyer down in the comments. If there's another name that you keep seeing pop up, hey, go ahead and let me know. The latest Dolphins rumors have been circulating around who could potentially be the next defensive coordinator in Miami. Why? McDaniel... He went out and was hired as the new Dolphins head coach. And anytime you bring in a new head coach, guess what? Usually means a change in the defensive coordinators or offensive coordinator as well. There is a report that is circulating right now around NFL circles that new head coach Mike McDaniel wants to bring in former Broncos head coach Vic Fangio. He's regarded as one of the best defensive minds in the league. And he's been coaching not in the NFL since 1979, but he's been coaching. In fact, Fangio is actually pretty close to where I'm from in central Pennsylvania all the way back in 1979. When I talk about points against, again, you have to understand Boyer has done a good job, but if you can upgrade, 
Vic Vangio is an absolute upgrade over Boyer, and in fact, Vangio is probably an upgrade over a lot of people. Now, maybe he wasn't the best head coach, but I've often said on this show and other chat sports material that there are certain guys built to be head coaches, certain guys built to be coordinators. If you can get Banjo as your DC, that's an absolute slam dunk. Back in 2021, which, yeah, this year, third in the league, 25th back in 2020, 10th with the Broncos, then he was with the Bears, first in the league, ninth. So at the end of the day, you got four out of the last five years with a top 10 defense. It's pretty damn good to me. So who do you think is the better DC? And I want you to answer this, not just overall, because I think the better overall defensive coordinator is Vic Fangio. But I want you to relate it to how this guy would be able to come in and be the solid defensive coordinator for the Dolphins. So who would be the better Dolphins DC? VC for Vic Fangio or JB for Josh Boyer? 